This is Paul T. Uh, welcome back to Bow News Network. Uh, we're actually t tracking um, uh, Hurricane Ida as it makes landfall here in uh, just uh, in the southeast section of uh, uh, Louisiana. Uh, if you're new to this channel, please by all means go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe. So let's actually take a closer look at actually what's happening here. Uh, we can clearly see from our Doppler radar that um, uh, Hurricane Ida has actually made landfall somewhere around very, very close to the region of Grand Isle and um, Golden Med uh, Meadow in the region of uh, Louisiana. Uh, we actually see um, the eye of the storm actually passing over a landmass there. So it actually has made landfall very, very catastrophic and very, very high winds. Uh, we're looking at winds to the tune of 150 miles per an hour. Uh, the pressure is held steady at about 933 millibars. And um, we're also um, seeing that it's moving at about 13 miles per an hour um, towards the uh, towards the northwest. As we take a closer look at the system, um, it's tightened quite a bit. Uh, that eye wall has become very, very clearly defined uh, moving forward. And um, we're actually looking at what could be the most catastrophic hurricane that has actually impacted uh, the region uh, in Louisiana. Um, efforts have been made to provide um, uh, shelter as well as evacuation for uh, tens of thousands of residents in the region of New Orleans. However, um, based on recent um, media outlets, um, uh, the city officials feel that um, there has been enough, uh, extensive enough um, evacuation procedures for the residents, but uh, they're trying to provide the very best um, care for the residents of uh, New Orleans. Um, as we take a real closer look at this system, we can see that some of the more severe weather is actually on the on the rear right quadrant. Uh, we're seeing some very, very severe thunderstorm activity on that um, rear um, right quadrant and also where you see that rotational uh, those ro rotational indic um, indicators showing up on the Doppler radar with the lightning. So there's a se severe amount of wind, very, very catastrophic wind speed. We're talking about 150 miles per an hour, which is a seven, seven miles per an hour shy of a category five. So it's a solid category four, but basically the, if you're looking at it um, uh, as far as on paper, uh, you're looking at a category five storm. It just hasn't been officially declared that um, simply because it's seven miles per an hour lower than the cutoff for you uh, based on the uh, on the scaling. But in any event, these are category five effects that are being felt as far as severe um, wind and, and uh, rain and also potential hail and um, potential uh, tornadoes. We do see that tornado watch that's extending all the way from Grand Isle. It extends all the way up into, into the states uh, you can see it extending across to Crestview, Florida, and um, it extends all the way up to Macomb and all the way uh, across to um, uh, just north of Mobile. Now, speaking of Mobile, Alabama, um, we can see there that there's some flash flood advisories that are actually in that area, um, extending from Pensacola to the west of Mobile. And they received, when we looked in the radar for storm activity, we did see a significant amount of rainfall in the region of Mobile, Alabama, about an hour before the storm actually imp, um, made landfall in southeastern Louisiana. There was actually a very, very powerful outer band that actually impacted that region, and um, it actually um, created quite a bit of rainfall in the region of Mobile. So hence, you can actually see those uh, flash flood advisories. One is specifically near Gulf Breeze in Florida, and another is specifically around the area of Pensacola. Um, we're looking, we're continuing to monitor the Doppler radar to see exactly what's actually happening with the storm as far as any new, uh, new advisories are concerned. But the entire area is pretty much well lit with a lot of um, 
tropical storm advisories that are actually popping up from local spotter reports and also um, as the system starts to make its way further inland um, residents in the area Baton Rouge and Lafayette should be preparing for a significant amount of change in weather um, we don't see the outer bands actually interacting but they should be receiving some degree of rainfall at this particular time as the system makes its way further inland so we're actually uh, this is going to be ongoing coverage of um, uh, the system as it makes its way further in to the uh, Louisiana coastline and um, we do see some uh, significant warnings in the region um, as far as uh, um, rotation um, different cells close to the very wall eye that are actually coming in showing um, hail size uh, half of an inch to an inch and in some cases um, we do see uh, several um, spots where actually um, tropical storm um, uh, tropical storm and hurricane effects are being um, seen um, witnessed on the, the radar right at this this particular minute so let's actually take a closer look at rainfall um, so that we can actually get an idea of actually what's happening um, currently we're seeing we're anticipating 15 to 20 20 uh, inches of rain in the region from about um, from New Orleans all the way out to the region of uh, Morgan City and then we see additional rainfall zone um, 10 to 15 inches from about um, say uh, Lake Charles all the way uh, east further out to uh, New Orleans and then as you can see the storm will actually make its way further north and uh, into the region of Jackson uh, Mississippi and they can anticipate 6 to 10 inches of rain as the system makes its way in so if we we'll take a look further at uh, this Doppler radar imagery that's coming in um, on our live stream on YouTube and Facebook uh, you can clearly see that this system is actually impacting land now um, that eye wall is very very tightly defined so as a system makes its way um, into the into Louisiana being that Grand Isle is actually on that front right quadrant of the storm they're going to be receiving the brunt of the eye wall forces um, very very shortly which are going to be very very catastrophic and very very destructive um, the right the, the front right quadrant as you can see is sectioned off um, by the tornado advisory however um, there is a local spot report of hur hurricane um, uh, circumstance um, hurricane force winds as well as elements there so as the system is moving northwest more of that right quadrant is going to be impacting Grand Isle and it's going to be very very devastating um, for the residents uh, for for that section of, of Louisiana as it moves further in uh, another warning will be for Galliano and also for New Orleans as that front right quadrant interacts more with the city of New Orleans then that's going to be um, very very destructive and catastrophic we're talking about um, hurricane force winds of 150 miles per an hour uh, we did want to make a note here that um, uh, the city of uh, New Orleans is grappling with opening shelters um, as a result of the pandemic and um, they're trying to observe of course social distancing um, if we take a look at this storm further as far as the de de development over a matter of a few hours we do see that this storm grew by 45 miles per an hour in just five hours uh, to 150 miles per an hour which is just seven miles per an hour below a category five so it is a dangerous very very dangerous category four hurricane right now and this is the 16th anniversary of the impact of Hurricane Katrina in 2005 so um, we're actually um, looking at a very very significant hurricane here uh, it's forecasted to possibly increase to 150 five miles per hour as it makes its way inland and there have only been about four hurricanes that have hit the United States um, as a category five uh, if you recall Michael in 2018 and then there's Andrew in 1992 and then Camille in 1969 and also uh, for the Labor Day hurricane of 1935 
Um, right now, also, we're very concerned, as we had mentioned in our previous forecast, uh, that we're very concerned about the um, the hospital uh, hospital situation in New Orleans, uh, where bo uh, beds are nearly full in New Orleans hospitals, and um, shelters have been provided for those who are fleeing their homes. Uh, New Orleans officials um, also stated that due to the rapid intensification of the hurricane, they really didn't have the t um, as much time as they needed to coordinate mandatory evacuations. So they are basically asking, they had asked a residence um, when they saw the storm approaching to uh, voluntarily simply leave as soon as possible and seek the be best shelter. And uh, we're, we're actually looking at um, shelters operating with reduced capacity, according to the governor, Governor John uh, Bell Edwards, and then uh, for um, the residents of New Orleans, uh, Mayor Latoya C Cantrell um, had urged residents prior to the storm impacting to leave voluntarily. Um, based on the news reports, they have about 5,000 National Guard um, um, troops um, on, on on guard for um, providing services to the citizens of the region of Louisiana. Uh, 10,000 linemen have been on standby and um, as the system doubled in strength um, in less than 24 hours, uh, this explosive intensification is going to call upon um, the, the resources of all of these, um, these individuals as we move forward with um, preparing for the impact, the full impact of Hurricane Ida um, in the region of, of New Orleans. Uh, we did want to highlight the, the storm surge also. That is very, very important um, because of the power of the, of the storm. And it just goes to show you that um, in the region just e uh, west of the mouth of the Mississippi River, uh, the, the anticipated storm surge of um, 12 to 16 feet so that is actually um, going to be a serious issue um, as far as um, different reports for storm surge so far uh, we do see at Shell Beach is six feet above mean higher high water um, and also for the Bay Waveland the Yacht Club in Mississippi 5.4 feet above uh, mean higher mean higher water so we're actually seeing um, an inundation of water in many, many spots, even while the storm is still relatively over open water and basically making impact. In the region. So um, as far as the Doppler radar is concerned, we're continuing to monitor the situation. Um, we anticipate that more tornado advisors will be popping up as the system makes its way inland and um, we're going to be continuing to monitor uh, the situation. Um, some of the readings in the outer squalls are coming up at about 45 to 50 knots but of course maximum sustained winds are going to be more treacherous um, very very close to the uh, to the eye wall and that is making making landfall um, close to the region of uh, Grand Isle and Golden Meadow, Louisiana. So we're continuing to monitor the situation. So we're hoping that this video will be serving all of those residents who are in the region of the Southeast United States to actually get a, a better view as far as what's actually happening at this particular time. Um, here we are in the early evening um, on Sunday as this hurricane actually makes it makes its way further inland into the um, into the uh, Louisiana region. Uh, keep in mind uh, for the next 24 hours. It's going to be bringing a significant amount of rainfall to the region. New Orleans should anticipate a lot of rain. Jackson, Mississippi, um, also regions in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, as you can see from our Doppler radar, even as far away as the eye wall is, um, we do see that um, there is a 
significant amount of um, special marine warnings all the way from um, Gulf Shores across to Pensacola uh, down to Destin, Florida and Alice Beach at Panama City. So we are monitoring um, exactly what's actually happening with the system as it makes its way further in to the region. And as we continue to monitor the hurricane as it makes its way inland into Louisiana, as we had mentioned in our previous forecast, one of the main concerns that we had was um, all of the information that was coming in as far as um, uh, adequate um, provisions being made for hospitals as they, um, most of the healthcare workers have actually committed, committed to taking care of um, uh, patients as they make their way um, to, as a hurricane makes its way further into the Louisiana area. But um, one of the most distressing situations that we're concerned about is possible loss of power to many of these, hotel, uh, these hospitals. And if that is the case, then there's a good chance that if the, if the generator, backup generators are not working, then, then this may pose a significant threat and a risk hazard for patients who are, who are um, uh, trying to fight for their lives as a result of the pandemic in the region. So now we're actually live streaming here on YouTube as well as Facebook as the Hurricane Hurricane Ida makes landfall. Uh, we can clearly see the eye very, very close to the Grand Isle area. And as the system makes its way further in, um, there is a tornado advisory, which is in the front right quadrant of the storm, which is where most of the really tur uh, turbulent and treacherous bad uh, um, bad weather is and we see that it's, the system is so wide that it's actually impacting all the way as far as Pensacola um, Florida but uh, as this eye wall actually makes its way inland then we're going to see some really um, heavy heavy downpours of rain coupled with hurricane force winds and other elements possibly even hail or possibly even um, a tornado in within the system and those are, have the potential to be very, 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 very destructive going forward. So we'll continue to monitor this hurricane as it makes its way inland into the into uh, southeastern uh, Louisiana. We just want to thank all of our subscribers for tuning in to our ongoing coverage of Hurricane Ida as it makes its way inland. And by all means, please go ahead and smash that like button and uh, hit that and subscribe and, and notification bell for updates as we continue to monitor um, Hurricane Ida, which has made landfall and, and it's actually heading further inland at this particular point. Well, thank you for talking. Thank you for watching um, Bow News Network and our latest Bow to the Weather report on and with our ongoing coverage of uh, Hurricane Island. Thank you so much.